Well, welcome back. I want to show you what I've done with the gazebo. Or gazebo. <laughs> I'm so tired, I don't know what it's called. The carport. I remember, remember in the last video that I had an issue with this moving. It don't move. It don't <coughs> move at all. But, what I was going to do was put braces on each leg, right? One there, and I was going to put one over here or up there somehow so that I could tie it into that stringer. But instead, I come up with a better idea that if I would take and... Put something right in the middle tie it to the shop wall that would take care of the sway both ways that's what I did I took some 2 by 2 steel and made a frame took some 1 by 1 angle iron it's all angle iron and braced it there everything is welded then I bolted it, you can see the two bolts there through the frame, and I had to put spacers behind that because of the ribs in the siding, and then I put three legs through that, but that thing, that thing weighs probably 20 pounds, it's heavy, it's two by two by three sixteenths metal, so it's heavy. Didn't have to go that heavy, but that's what I had. So let me show you. Well, I took my ladder away. Hold on. And there is the finished product. Now, I know this centerpiece <laughs> is not straight. And I tell you what, that was a struggle. Just trying to get those holes through the siding and the little bit of room that I had. But uh, we lagged those three bolts or lag screws into that cross member, cinched it up tight, and then I cut two verticals and put one on each side and screwed those into the horizontal as well as the top uh, thing there. I put those in and then I fastened them on the bottom. So, we fixed the Wiggly Carport. And so, it probably took me about four or five hours to get that all together. But it worked. I was happy for and that. And I thought, since that was such a short little video, I will show you my 350 Honda here. 73, 1973 CL 350. The CL means the pipes go up the CB 350 the pipes go down this was theoretically an on-road off-road type bike but you can see it, the tires are definitely not off-road tires I have these tires the guy said were new and they look new he went through the bike he put new coils new points condenser uh plugs of course like i said he messed with the carburetors and he just didn't get those right but uh we did get that this side fixed anyway um i will get at the other side now that i've got a little bit of time but it does have a few dents. There's a little dent right here. And then there's a small one right here. But other than that, I mean, the side covers are off. I'll show you what they look like in a second here. But, uh, you know, for a 73, it is not in bad shape. I had to take the mirrors off of my 250 and put on it. didn't have any mirrors. I mean, he gave me a set of aftermarket mirrors I put on the 250 over here but 
anyway, you can see the front tires, They're like brand new also. And uh, put a new petcock on it. Uh, what else need? New battery. Uh, the tank is in very good shape. Let's see if I can get this open with one hand here. You gotta kinda push down and move this little lever at the same time. <laughs> it wasn't made to be. <clears throat> okay. Hold on. It takes two hands. You can see the inside of this tank. It has got no rust on it whatsoever. The guy tested it. He said everything was fine. He did not seal it. So that's a good thing. So, I mean, not that sealing is a bad thing, but uh, anyway, didn't have to horse around with that. It's got 8,400 miles on it. Everything works. The horn works. The lights all work. Turn signals work. Um, yeah, it's just a sweet little bike. Uh, there was one small hole right there in the exhaust. He had that welded shut. And uh, so other than a carb issue, it really wasn't too bad a bike. I mean, I paid a little bit more than I wanted to pay for it. But uh, let me show you underneath the seat here. I had to fix the seat. But, um, yeah, it's even got a document holder. It got a manual with it. And it does have a complete uh, kit, tool kit. It goes right up in here. And I'll show you what I, the side covers. And I purchased, along with those two carburetors, came, this was another plus was here's the side covers they need uh, a little bit of TLC and paint work and stuff on them which I'll probably end up doing but uh, yeah along with the carburetors came these air cleaners these are the stock air cleaners I'll show you here they got like a cover on them if I can get them apart with one hand and yeah, hold on again let me there do this. I need two hands. These are used air cleaners. Okay, so not too excited about those, but yeah, you know what they want for these? eBay. I found a pair of them, new ones. 120 bucks. Isn't that a racket? Man. But these are the side covers that go over these that I need to clean up and paint. But uh, yeah, they protect them, and then you see that hole right there that goes through the uh, air cleaner right there and that corresponds with this hole and this hole because there's another one of those air cleaners on the other side and then you take this rod and you run that through the center of the bike and there's a tube up goes through and that's what holds these two side covers on and it holds this whole apparatus on so, yep, it's uh, pretty crazy. This is the carb that was on it, the one I replaced. I put it all back together with those China jets and things in it that don't work. I did get a couple with the two carburetors, a couple boots too. So I'm going to take a look at those closer and see how good they are. But, uh, yeah, I got a kind of nice deal for that guy on Facebook sold me all of that. Two carbs and these set up here, two of these and those boots for 120 bucks. That was a heck of a deal. So, like I said, these alone cost 120 for two of them. So, anyway, that's all we got. I just wanted to show you the CL350. Some of the were interested in that when I uh, made the first video there. But, um, yeah, I'll show you <clears throat> right now. I don't want to start it because I've got the carbs all drained off. And, uh, but it, it, it runs <clears throat> okay. It just kind of pops and pops. And then it, then when you take off with it, when you put a load on it, it just really misbehaves. Let's put it that way. So anyway, 
the zero turn is back at my brother's house. I have the wheel horses next. We're going to get that. That push mower of mine. But, uh, yep, going to get this thing fixed up. Get it running. Get it back to him. And then, he, every time I go over there, he's got more stuff to fix. I've got this weed whacker. It's a still. That's the only kind I'll actually work on is a still. I don't like any other brand. Maybe Husqvarna, but no weed beaters. And then I also picked up this. He had this over here, over in his garage. And it works. I plugged it in today, and after I pressure washed it and everything yesterday, let it dry all night, and uh, put it, it, it does pump up air, but it's got holes in the tank, at least one. So we're going to uh, drill a hole out and weld that hole shut and uh, see if this thing will hold air. So another project for another video. Anyway, nice day in northwestern Ohio here. A little on the hot and humid side, but it's summer. Thanks for watching all and subscribing, and we'll catch you on the next one.